But first, South Sudan is the world's newest country, gaining independence from Sudan in 2011. But two years later, civil war broke out in the small East African nation. Though a peace agreement was signed in 2015, sporadic fighting continues. Millions have been displaced, while rival leaders fight for power and the country's oil and mineral wealth. A two-year-long investigation into those leaders and their allies reveals billions has been looted from the country. NewsHour producer PJ Tobia has our story and a warning. Some viewers may find some of the imagery disturbing. Small, poor, and dangerous. The UN has called South Sudan one of the most horrendous human rights situations in the world. Fighters loyal to the president, Salva Kiir, have been battling those backing former vice president, Riek Machar, for most of the last four years. Caught in the crossfire are Sudan's impoverished civilians. More than two million South Sudanese have been displaced by the fighting. Tens of thousands have been killed. The UN found that in just six months last year, 1,300 women were raped by fighters in one South Sudanese state alone. We had optimism. A report released today by The Century, a rights group in Washington, accuses the leaders who've orchestrated this brutality of making billions off the conflict. Actor George Clooney wrote the forward to the report. Hotel Rwanda star Don Cheadle also works with The Century. Both were at the National Press Club this morning to talk about the investigation. This is pretty explosive stuff. We're talking about the president and the ousted vice president, along with all their generals, uh, that we're able to prove without any question that, uh, that not only that are they committing these uh, crimes, which they've already been accused of, but that they're profiting off of it. The report outlines how South Sudan's political leaders, generals, and their families have used the chaos of war to generate vast sums of wealth. They've built mansions across the world, from Uganda and Kenya to Australia. That young woman flashing the peace sign from the sunroof of a BMW, she's the daughter of a former general, a former general whose state salary was never more than 45,000 U.S. dollars. This man is the stepson of another South Sudanese general. He calls himself the young tycoon. His Facebook photos show a life of privilege unimaginable to most South Sudanese. Here, he narrates a tour of a presidential suite at a luxury hotel in Las Vegas. Nice. So it's like a mafia in some ways, a mafia taking over the state. John Prendergast is the director of the Enough Project, a rights group that oversees the Century Group. The mafia we see on the movies, it's shooting a few people. In South Sudan, tens of thousands of people have died in this war with horrific atrocities, mass rape, child soldier recruitment, all the worst of the worst of the human rights abuses that we hear about globally. And this is how they stay in power. Prendergast says much of the corruption happens through government contracts granted to the family members of political and military leaders. As they put their family members as, as share owners in the companies, and then they get contracts uh, from the state to allow those companies to operate. So it's a, it's a, it's a backdoor way out of the national treasury to, to privately enrich yourself and your family. Meanwhile, the war helps the rich get richer. If you control the government institutions, well, you have access to the army, you have access to the state budget, you can buy weapons, you can steal as much as you want, you can d issue contracts to your own companies that you set up. It's in the context of war that a certain group of people become fabulously wealthy while the rest of the country is immiserated. As a result, Two bitter enemies, President Kiir and his rival, Riek Machar, own luxury villas just a short distance from one another in the exclusive Lavington neighborhood of Nairobi, Kenya, all made possible by international enablers, says Prendergast. Bankers and businessmen and arms dealers, all kinds of different lawyers, shipping agents, accountants. There are a number of different professions that are gladly at the service of dictators and war criminals because they pay an extra premium. Clooney, Cheadle, and Prendergast came to the White House this afternoon for a meeting with President Obama. They want the president to sign an executive order targeting the financial assets of South Sudan's leaders. Such an order would make it difficult for these leaders to access the international banking system, move cash, buy property, and do business across borders. If we were able to create that standard over time where real consequences would accrue to people who would be willing to kill by the thousands 
to stay in power to gain power, it would have a, I believe, a chilling effect on mass atrocities being committed in the future. South Sudan's leaders keep their money offshore. That makes them vulnerable. Because they have this vulnerability of offshoring their assets, we can use existing policy tools to go after that money. It's a strategy that's been used to target terrorists post 9-11. We got to raise the cost of doing business with war criminals. Corrupt leaders of war-torn countries are nothing new. But applying this strategy to isolate them is new. It might be a way to begin holding these mass killers responsible for their actions. PJ Tobia, PBS NewsHour in Washington.